Miami. Here I have Plastilene. All right, and behind me here is a Kawasaki Ninja 110 octane gasoline made from plastic waste. Let's go. What if I told you a 22 year old black man discovered how to turn plastic waste into fuel? Not in a lab full of billion dollar machines, not backed by big oil companies, but in his own garage. This isn't science fiction, it's real. His name is Julian Brown, a young inventor from Duluth, Georgia. At just 22, he stunned the world with a creation he called Plastiline, a fuel made entirely from plastic waste. It was more than an invention, it was hope. The kind of breakthrough that could clean oceans, power cars, and rewrite humanity's future. But then, he disappeared. No updates, no interviews, no trace. What happened to Julian Brown? And why did the world suddenly fall silent about his discovery? Let's find out. For the last 20 years, the world has been drowning in its own waste. Plastic bottles float where fish once swam. Landfills rise like mountains, built not from stone, but from human neglect. Every year, millions of tons of trash end up in the ocean turning blue waters into gray poison. Scientists warn, activists shout, but the tide of pollution keeps rising. And in the middle of all this, a teenager from Duluth, Georgia, decided he wouldn't just complain, he'd act. While most 17-year-olds were thinking about video games, parties, and college applications, Julian Brown was thinking about plastic, about the bottles, the bags, the trash no one cared about, and how to turn it into something the world needed, fuel. At just 17, he built his first plastic-to-fuel reactor, a homemade machine crafted from spare parts and raw determination. He called his creation Plastiline, a spark of genius born from frustration and hope. Julian wasn't just fighting pollution. He was trying to prove that one young mind could change the direction of an entire planet. In simple terms, Julian did something almost unbelievable. He took plastic waste, the bottles, plates, and cans most of us throw away without a second thought, and turned it into fuel. He called it Plastiline. The idea was bold, but the science was real. Julian used a process called microwave pyrolysis, a method that breaks down plastic using intense microwave energy. It heats the plastic until it vaporizes into petroleum gas. That vapor is then cooled and condensed into liquid crude oil. From that crude, you can refine gasoline, diesel, and even jet fuel. In other words, the same trash that clogs our oceans could one day power our cars and planes. And the most incredible part? He started it all at just 17 years old. Still in high school, still living in Duluth, Georgia, he began experimenting after learning how much damage plastic pollution was doing to the planet. With no funding and no fancy lab, he built his first prototype from scrap metal, broken lab gear, and the shell of an old microwave. I built my first setup using scrap parts and a busted microwave. It took years to get the formula right. I burned through hundreds of failed tests, but I knew the science would hold. Each experiment brought him a little closer. Each failure taught him something new. And before long, Julian Brown, the high school kid who started in a garage, had created a machine that could change the world. Now, five years later, he is on his fifth prototype. In one of the videos he posted online, he said, I have created Plastiline, a gasoline alternative made from plastic waste. The entire world deserves to know that this thing that we are seeing polluting our world, this thing in our ocean is not what we have been told it is. Plastic is made of petroleum and it could be turned back into petroleum. How incredible. The crazy part is that this guy didn't even go to college. Yes, you heard right. And it wasn't because his parents were poor and didn't have money to send him to college. In his own words, I don't have time to go to college and get started in four years. In four years, I need to have my company built and the machines heading out there. I have been a graduate of high school for two and a half years, and I already have five prototypes. What incredible determination from the young man. And you could see it in the videos he posted on his TikTok page where he has over two million followers. His videos are often of him working in his lab, filling up engines with fuel he made from plastic trash. His dedication to his work has been unwavering, despite the financial challenges that come with such ambitious innovation. As he puts it, what I do is very expensive. A single part can cost tens of thousands of dollars. However, thanks to his dedication, he has been able to attract grants and funding, which has helped to procure the necessary components to continue his research safely and effectively. One of such funding was from the co-founder of Reddit, 
Alexis Ohani, who gave him a $100,000 no-string-attached fund. His popularity put him on famous platforms like Forbes, which wrote an entire feature about him. Julian also became a 776 Foundation Climate Fellow. Basically, everyone wanted a piece of Julian Brown. Interestingly, Julian is often called a backyard scientist, and he operates his company, Jabs Pyrolysis and Energy Recovery, from his Alabama home. His lab featured solar panels powering his pyrolysis reactor, a process he claimed produced less than recycling plastic in emissions. In 2024, Brown suffered second-degree burns during an explosion while experimenting. He recovered and continued to share updates online. This goes to show how determined and dedicated Brown is to his invention. In March 2025, Julian Brown wrote, I have dedicated the last five years of my life, starting in high school, to this journey. I began this journey because I saw a huge lack in the recycling industry of all things recycling. We are told recycling is occurring, yet any observance of our natural world would show otherwise. He also recalled a childhood moment. When I was five years old, I told my mom that I was going to create something that would change the world. It's always been within me. I just never knew what it was going to be. Now, what does the scientific community have to say about Julian's invention? Not surprisingly, Plastiline has not only caught the attention of the public, but has also piqued the interest of the scientific community. The fuel has undergone testing by scientists, and the results have been promising. According to some researchers, Brown's diesel variant produced cleaner emissions compared to traditional diesel. One scientist expressed astonishment, stating, I thought it was surprisingly well distilled. It blew my mind that plastic can be redistilled into diesel. If his process can be verified and replicated safely, it could help reduce both plastic waste and fuel dependency. During the test, he powered a 2023 Dodge Scat Pack muscle car entirely with his self-made fuel, Plastiline. In a video posted on X, the car's engine roared to life and then moved forward under its own power, confirming that the fuel produced from recycled plastic was strong enough to power a high-performance vehicle. The environmental implications of Plastiline are significant. By converting plastic waste into fuel, Brown's process addresses two major issues, reducing plastic pollution and creating an alternative energy source. This dual impact positions Plastiline as a potentially transformative solution in the ongoing battle against environmental degradation and climate change. However, despite the potential of his invention, Brown has faced numerous obstacles. On June 14, 2025, Julian posted something that caught the attention of many and hinted that he was facing attacks as a result of his invention. Apparently, he discovered that a helicopter had been circling above him at night with the spotlight shining directly down on him. Julian had been in Alabama working on his reactor, and somehow this helicopter kept finding him. He took a video of it and posted it on his TikTok page with the caption, A secret helicopter found circled me in the middle of nowhere. This doesn't sound scary, but his next post was. On June 25th, Julian made another post where he made a statement that sent chills down people's spine. He said, I know that I'm not gonna live long. And that's why I put every day, every hour, every minute into building, into growing. Why am I out here working on this plastic and the fuel reactor I've been working on for five years? since I was 17. Why am I out here in 100 degree weather? Why am I out here despite being falsely accused and reported to the EPA and the IRS? Why am I out here despite weird black helicopters that turn off their radar transponder circling me six times at night? Why am I out here sleeping in my van, crazy humidity, mosquitoes, gnats flying in, and yet I still do it? Why am I out here despite having to drive four hours every time I want to work on this machine because when I was doing it in my parents' backyard, I blew myself up and I had to go to the hospital for second degree burn surgery. I do this because this is my mission that I've assigned myself to. I do this because I do not fear death. It may sound dramatic, but if you think closely, you would understand the reason for this rant. You see, Brown's invention has the potential to disrupt a $4 trillion industry. And the fact that this invention is coming from a black man makes it even more dangerous. Julian Brown knew those and all those who watched that video knew this. That was why the comments section was filled with concerns and worries. Some people even begged him to be careful and get security and not post his location. 
Despite this, Julian kept working. He drove eight hours every time he wanted to test his machine. This is due to the fact that he had to move his machine from his home lab to an isolated place after he suffered a second-degree burn from the explosion. And then on July 9, 2025, Julian Brown made his final post before he disappeared. In the video, Julian was sitting in a car looking around nervously. His voice was different and he sounded urgent. He said, Listen everybody, I can't go into much details but there is some very, very odd stuff going on. I'm certainly under attack right now in many different ways. I just want everyone to know, so just Kim, do keep your eyes open. He added that he was still working and building, and nothing was going to stop that. After this post, he went silent. No post, no updates. As you can imagine, his message caused panic among his TikTok followers. People began to ask questions. A subreddit called, Where is Julian Brown? exploded with thousands of members demanding answers. People tagged the FBI, the police, and different security agencies. Conspiracy theorists flew around. Some people theorized that Julian Brown's disappearance was thanks to the big guys in the oil industry. Others said it was the government, while some said it was corporate hit men. For two weeks, the whereabouts of Julian Brown was unknown. His social media page remained silent. Then, on July 28th, Julian's mother, Nia Brown, gave an interview to Daily May. Her statement was short but gave no hint to what happened to Julian Brown. She said, I can confirm Julian is safe, but in the best interest of his security, I'm not able to provide any more information. However, her statement didn't do much to quell the concerns, as it implied that while he was safe, he was currently in hiding. Two days later, Julian Brown finally returned online. His first post on July 30th was a picture of him and his mom. Then on August 1st, he gave a lengthy explanation on what had happened and why he went silent for two weeks. Brown's video explaining his absence is captioned, I'm back. The work for Earth and humanity continues like a heart that never skipped a beat. In the video, he explained that his phone had been hacked. You see these hackers, they got into my iCloud and they were basically able to remotely watch and view my entire phone. I figured out they were in my phone, kicked them out and they had no more access to my phone but they still had access to my Instagram somehow, he said. Brown said that he had to approach Meta for help, and the process took a long time. This led to his delayed return to Instagram. Thankfully, it wasn't as serious as everyone thought. But the question is, why did it cause so much concern and worry? Well, history shows us that many other black inventors like Julian Brown have been silenced over the years. You see, back in 1787, when the U.S. parent system was created, it technically removed black people from the system. While the law didn't explicitly say that black people couldn't get a patent, the law didn't recognize enslaved people as citizens. So, when enslaved black people invented something, their white owners took credit for it by legally stealing their invention. Benjamin Montgomery, who invented the steamboat propeller, was a good example of this. Now, even after slavery ended, the system still found a way to silence black inventors. According to historians, countless black inventions were stolen by white business partners and employees who simply put their names in the patent. For example, Louis Latimer developed an improved carbon filament, which was crucial to the practical and long-lasting incandescent light bulb. Despite his significant refinement, Thomas Edison received more widespread recognition and financial benefit for the overall invention of the light bulb. Granville T. Woods, known as the Black Edison, Woods was a prolific inventor in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, primarily in electrical systems for railways. He repeatedly had to engage in legal battles to assert his ownership of his numerous inventions. Similarly, in the early 1800s, Thomas Jennings, a free black man, developed early processes for dry cleaning. He was one of the first black inventors to receive a U.S. patent, granted in 1821. However, his work highlights the broader challenge for other black inventors, particularly those who were enslaved, as laws often prevented them from securing patents for their innovations. Clearly the history is there, and even though things have gotten considerably better, it doesn't change the fact that black inventors live in a system where they have been consistently subjugated. However, despite these challenges, black investors like Julian Brown remain resolute. Brown remains undeterred, emphasizing his commitment to seeing his fuel implemented worldwide.
I see it now as, let's get it in the world and implement it, he said, reflecting on his journey and future aspirations. Brown's resilience in the face of adversity exemplifies the spirit of innovation and the perseverance required to drive meaningful change. His story is a testament to the power of youthful innovation and the potential for individuals to contribute to global solutions, regardless of the challenges they face. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to like this video, drop a comment, and subscribe to our channel.